Amen, y'all. Amen, everybody. Let me go ahead and we're going to get started on time. Amen. y'all can see me i hope y'all can hear me okay um i'm excited about this evening it's one minute to five it's one minute to five so we're gonna start at five o'clock exactly at five o'clock exactly if it's uh if it's cutting in and out it's also on my regular facebook live sometimes these electronics don't work as promising as we want them to work but nevertheless there's always a word from the lord so i'm gonna just push past this so if you can't get it on this network go to my regular facebook page kathy lafleur and click on there because i'm live there too amen amen hey mom i know you on there can you hear me okay amen because i see it cutting in and out so we gonna we gonna shift gears and just go over to my Facebook page, Kathy Lafleur Facebook page, in case it's cutting out. Okay. Is it cutting out? Okay. Um, So it's cutting in and out. So we just gonna y'all jump on my regular Facebook page, and we are gonna go live over there. All right, we just do it there. All right. Let me get get this phone set up. Y'all, listen. I'm really excited for real. I'm really excited because. Uh, this is the will of God and hey, God bless you, sir. Amen. So that's okay. It didn't work on, on uh, my stream yard, but that's okay because if you're on my regular Facebook page, that's where I'm moving to um, because no matter what, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And I got to get this word out. So I just want to say thank you to everybody that um, came on to support. I want you to know that um, this is something new for me. This is something new for me. This is something that God uh, assigned for me to do. He put it in my spirit and in my heart. And he told me that I have to um, have an appointed time with him uh, to bring forth his word. And so... With that being said, um, I'm on an appointment with the Lord, and um, I'm grateful for my opportunity. So if you are on, just give me a couple seconds to just set up here and share it. I'll share it to my other page. All right. So we're going to get started. We're just going to go ahead and pray. Amen. God, I thank you for this opportunity tonight, Lord God, to bring forth your word. I thank you for this assignment that you have placed me on. God, I know that I may not know all that you're doing in my life, but I thank you nonetheless, Father God, that you've chosen me for this very hour. God, I thank you for this assignment that you've given me. And Lord, I pray right now, Lord God, that it will be pleasing to you, Father, as you look down on your daughter, Father God. I ask that you would decrease me, Lord, and let your Holy Spirit increase in me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart 
Be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And that was him so careful to give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory that is due your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And so we're going to go ahead and get going. So um, I want to first welcome you to Fire in the Hole. Uh, this is a Sunday night preaching. It is uh, something that God assigned to me for the month of July. We are going to just be dealing with um, the God of a Second Chance as our series. We're going to be dealing with the God of a Second Chance. And um, throughout the month of July, what we'll do is we're going to go and look into the mercy and the grace of God as we know him. We're going to look at how he demonstrated his love and his mercy and his grace through his son, Jesus Christ. And, and I just came to tell you tonight just that Jesus loves us. He loves us so much. And, and I know with everything that's going on in the world today that it's difficult to see the sunshine through the clouds. It's difficult to see the, the sunshine through the rain. It's difficult to see the sunshine through the storm. But I wanted to tell you that God loves us. And, and he demonstrates his love through his son, Jesus Christ. And, and he loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him shall not perish, but have everlasting, have eternal life. And no matter what it looks like out there, no matter what's going on, no matter what the doctor said, no matter what the nurses said, no matter what you feel like, no matter what you think it is, no matter what it sounds like, I want you to know that his mercy endures forever. And so no matter what you've been through, no matter what's happening on your job, no matter if your kids are in school, out of school, waiting for school, graduated, didn't graduate, it doesn't matter. His mercy endures forever. So I just came to bring you a word of encouragement today to let you know that God loves us so much and that he cares for us. And God is in control. So no matter what What's happening all around us we have to be faithful to know that God is in control he's in control of your life he's in control of my life he's in control of the daytime he's in control of the midnight he's in control of everything he's in control of the government he's in control of politics he's in control of our finance he's in control of our minds our bodies our God is in control. And so I just welcome you to fire in the whole Sunday night preaching with Reverend Kathy LaFleur. We're going to get right down into this lesson tonight. Amen. And I'm just so thankful that we serve a God who truly, truly cares for us. I found a chapter in, in, in Micah and, and we're, we're going to go to John for our lesson tonight, but I found a verse in Micah and it's in the seventh chapter of Micah verse number 18. And it says, where is another God like you? who pardons the guilt of the remnant, overlooking the sins of his special people. You will not stay angry with your people forever because you delight in showing unfailing love. God's love will never fail us. He is unconditional with his love. His love is undeniable. His love is attainable. His love is unexplainable. His love and his mercy endures forever. So I just want to thank and praise God for his love tonight. Amen. I thank and praise God for his love tonight. So our lesson is going to come out of the book of John chapter 8 verses 1 through 11. John chapter 8 verses 1 through 11. Amen. John chapter 8 verses 1 through 11. And it reads, Jesus went unto the Mount Olives and early in the morning he came again unto the temple and all the people came unto him and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses is now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him that they may have to accuse him. 
But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, he that is without sin among you, let him cast a stone at her. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground and they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. Verse 10, when Jesus had lifted up himself, he saw none but the woman. He said unto her, woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, neither or neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. I'm just going to preach just for a few moments in your hearing tonight. Case number J-O-H-N-8-1-11. Dismissed. Case number J-O-H-N-8-1-11. Dismissed. Case dismissed. So we find Jesus and he's teaching all the people in the temple who had come to hear him. And the Bible says that he's teaching and it is early in the morning. And he's interrupted during his teaching by the scribes and the Pharisees who brought a woman taken in the very act of adultery and set her in the midst and said to him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. And they begin telling him that the law of Moses commanded them that such should be stoned. And so what I noticed, the first thing I noticed in the text was that there had been a shift. And, and I want you to understand that I, I wanted to know why was someone who was caught in the act the very act of adultery brought into the temple in front of a crowd, in front of Jesus to, to, to deal with her circumstances. And it was because I pictured the temple as the place where they held Supreme Court of Judaism, held the, the meetings in the Temple Mount, and, and it was in a room that they held the Supreme Court meetings, and the room was called the Chamber of Hewn Stone. And this is why the Pharisees and the scribes brought the woman there, because this is where cases was tried in those days of Christ. And, and so this is the, why the Pharisees brought her there, and, and what was originally an early morning Bible study has just shifted into a courtroom proceeding and and they went to her home and, and I just had to imagine if this woman was brought in then that means they went to where she was and, and if this woman was brought in was caught in the very act early that morning that means they had to have known where to find her in order to go into her house bring her out take her to the court the chamber of the hewn stone early in the morning to put her on trial in the face of the people and Christ. Uh, they went into her home and executed a, a raid, a warrant, and apprehended her as a suspect, and now she's placed under arrest. And, and we're witnessing the preliminary hearing where the charges are being introduced to Christ. And, and they said, this woman, uh, the case number J-O-H-N 8-1-11 was caught in the very act of adultery. And, and they bring the charges to her and the charges are heavy because this is a death sentence according
according to the law of Moses. And, and so now we're sitting at the preliminary hearing and the charges are being introduced and it's in this moment that she's facing death. And, and this case that they brought to Jesus is a capital crime according to the text. And according to the law of Moses, this is what we can consider today as a high profile case. And, and But there seems to be a problem with the charges according to the law of Moses that they even brought to the table. So here's the problem. As I begin to look into the text a little deeper, I found that the problem was if they were invoking the law of Moses as, as something that they were using to say that it commanded them to stone her, then where is the man? My God. If they are invoking the law of Moses, then they have to do it by the whole book. Uh, and the law was found in Deuteronomy 22 and 23. And the law requires uh, the death of both the woman and the man who are caught in the act of adultery. Uh, verse 22 of Deuteronomy 22 says, If any man be found lying with a woman married to a husband, then they shall both of them shall die, both the man that lay with the woman and the woman, so shall be put away evil from Israel. Verse 23 says in Deuteronomy 22, if a damsel that is a virgin betroth unto a husband and, and a man finds her in the city and lie with her, verse 24, then ye shall bring them both out unto the gates of that city and ye shall stone them with stones that they die. Now we got to remember in the text that it says that the reason why they asked Jesus the question to begin with was to accuse him, to have accusations against him because they considered that he would go against what Moses has written. And so they were really, even though they were introducing a case against the woman, they were trying to bring Christ up on some trumped up charges. They were trying to find him guilty of something. They were trying to find him guilty of breaking the law. And, and Jesus is in the town and he's speaking boldly and he's doing signs and wonders, but and they couldn't understand was coming from and so what they did was they plotted and schemed but they needed a pawn so we see this woman and she's really just a pawn in the story she's really someone that had to be used that had to be sacrificed that had to be brought forth so that they can try to bring charges against our lord and savior and so they really weren't interested in whether she was stoned or not because according to the law if it was important for her to be stoned according to what moses written they would have taken her to the gate and not to the court. They would have taken her to the gate and stoned her to death. But no, they brought her into the chamber of Hugh in order to try her in front of the righteous judge. Thank God that we serve a judge that is righteous. Thank God Jesus is not just our advocate, but he's our mediator. Thank God they brought her case to Christ himself. What better hands is there to be in but the hands of God? Who's the better attorney to have? seeing over your case, but Jesus Christ himself. My mama used to say he's a lawyer in the, in the courthouse. He's a doctor in the hospital. My God, who better to try your case but God himself? And so they brought her to the right place at the right time. Yes, I know it was early in the morning, so I had to use my imagination when I used to be an adulterous woman. What was I doing with a man at my house early in the morning? That's because he spent the night. The only way they can find this man at her house, the adulterous woman's house, early in the morning was because that man spent the night. That man, but where is the husband? If this accusation is true, not only is the man that she committed adultery with missing, but so is the man that she's married to. Now, where are all these men when all these accusations are coming into play? It's only the woman that's facing it, but I came to tell you that the trial wasn't about her. The sentence wasn't about her. The accusations wasn't about her. Sometimes we go through things in life and, and it's really not about us. It's about what they're trying to disprove about the Christ that we serve. Uh, there's people all over the world today and they want to miscredit you. They want to misdrudge you. They want to mistreat you and they want to find fault in Christ by the way you walk, by the way I walk, by the way we walk, by what we say, what we do, uh, what we feel, what we preach, what we teach. They're not really tripping off of us. They're tripping off what's in us because the Bible says greater is he that is 
in me than he that is in the world. So they brought this case to the right one. Yeah, they brought it to the right one. And so we have to understand. So Jesus, oh my God. Jesus, he I'm a Thank you, God. I'm a Thank you, Jesus. So Jesus is being told that the woman is caught in the very act of adultery. Common sense would have told us that she should have had the person that she was involved with accompanied in there. But we don't even see the man brought into court with her. We don't see the man at trial and, and we don't hear that there's a warrant out for his arrest. We don't hear the files being shuffled and, and we don't see another prisoner coming through, but she's under arrest for the glory of God. So perhaps he stoops down and right as he's waiting to hear the rest of the charges. See, sometimes people come with half the story. It's easy to know. My God, perhaps he's waiting to hear the rest of the story. So he's doodling in the ground. I, I'm not going to guess what he wrote. I, I don't know if he wrote X's and O's or, or hearts and stars. I don't know what he did, but I just know he waited. Oh my God, he waited. And, and, and so he, he stoops down and, and he's waiting. And, and, and then we see that there's a case uh, right before him, uh, but he's missing some players. Uh, he's missing some participants and miss, been missing some people in the court proceedings. Uh, but the trial has already begun. Uh, so Jesus is observing the absence of the man and knowing that the scriptures on which the charge of adultery was based on called for both parties to be brought forth. And, and there's no doubt in my mind that Jesus knew that there was more to the story that then was being told. And, and you have to know that all these people that surrounded her, so now it's time for the witness testimony. Can we get a witness on the stand? Uh, who will you call forward? Uh, what type of case do we have here? Do you have any witness that will come up and testify about this woman being caught in the act of adultery? I know the guards brought her in, and I know she's under arrest, uh, but can I get a witness in here? Will you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. Will you take an oath and take the stand to testify against this woman? My God. And so we needed to know the witness testimony. It can't be hearsay. The witness testimony, it can't be hearsay. It can't be something that you heard somebody doing. You got to be careful with your witness. You got to be careful who you talk about because it can't be hearsay. You can't go and tell somebody what somebody else did based off of what somebody else told you. If you didn't see it for yourself, you got to not only watch your eyes, but you got to watch your mouth. Uh, you got to watch your mouth and you got to watch your heart. It, it can't be hearsay. So the witness testimony, uh, the burden of proof is on the prosecuting scribes and Pharisees. Uh, they have the burden of proof to prove that this woman was really guilty of adultery. And so the accusations are not grounds for adultery. So just them accusing you alone is not enough for God. God said, I, so, I need proof. I, Jesus is waiting. I need to see some evidence. I, and all else, sometimes you got to not only check the message, but check the messenger. Who is it coming from? Don't be afraid. I, don't be afraid to deal with the people that's bringing you the mess. I, to check their history. To check what they talk about half the time. If it's always negative, you got to check and see why is it always coming from you in a negative way. You got to check your witness. Uh, you have to make sure that you have admissible evidence in court uh, because the law, any testimony has to be documented. Uh, any testimony has to be tangible evidence. Uh, any testimony can't be top tarnished. Uh, it has to be introduced to the judge and the jury. Uh, and so hearsay is not relevant in a case. I so, so I don't care what you overheard. Ain't a hospital. I don't care what somebody told you. I don't care what they said I did. I don't care what they said I said. I, if you didn't hear me say it, I, that's not an admissible testimony. I, that's hearsay. I, that's gossip. I, that's taking somebody's word for it I, other than eyewitnessing it for yourself. So you got to be careful with your witness. I, so evidence uh, gives us facts beyond a reasonable doubt. I, evidence uh, deals with the act affidavit or the exhibits. Uh, do we have exhibit number one? We only have the woman. Uh, where's exhibit number two? Where's the man? Uh, he's missing from this case. Uh, and there's another party missing. Uh, the husband is missing. So where are they? Uh, and why is only the, the wife there? But let me show you something. Deuteronomy 19. This is why we got to watch our witness. This is why we got to check our mouth. This is why we got to watch what we go and repeat to somebody else. 
God. This is why we got to go and watch what we repeat to bring up charges on somebody into the courts of heaven. We got to watch what we say, what we overhear, and then go announce and pronounce and proclaim and declare. You got to watch your witness. You got to watch your words. Let me tell you why. Deuteronomy 19, 18 through 19 states, and the judges shall investigate thoroughly. And, and if the witness is a false witness, if the witness is a false witness and, and he hasn't accused his brother falsely, then you shall do to him mm, just as he had intended to do to you, to do to his brother. Thus, you shall purge the evil from among you. What are you saying, Reverend? What I'm saying is this. If you lie, I will and say I did. Mm. And, and you come to witness and, and bring your testimony to further lie on what you said someone did. Then the judgment that was supposed to be on me has now fallen on you. I, the stoning that was supposed to be for me has now shifted onto you. And so this is why we don't see any witness testifying against the woman. This is why, because they not only know the law that said she was supposed to be stoned, but they also know the law that said you shall not bear false witness against thy neighbor. How is it that you're going to know do not commit adultery as part of the commandment, but you don't even know the rest of the whole thing. You don't know that you're not supposed to lie on your neighbor. You don't know that you're not supposed to tell a false tale. You don't know that you ain't supposed to say something that didn't happen and act like it really happened and testify about it. They knew the law, but they knew that if they stood up before the righteous judge and they gave a witness testimony and that testimony came out to be a lie, then they were subjected to the judgment of stoning. Ah, my God, you got to be careful because you will be subjected to the punishment of what Jesus, what should have been for the adulterer, will fall in your lap. Why? Because you have an un Thank you, God. She has an unfaithful lifestyle, but you have an unfaithful heart. She has an unfaithful way of doing things, but you have an unfaithful witness. You in the same boat. It's the pot calling the kettle black, but your end got a little bit burnt up. You a little blacker than her because the law is on her side in this. If you bring a false witness, that witness is going to be judged just like she should have been judged. So you got to be careful with your witness. And so because the witness are not merely subject to cross-examination, but they're also become a subject to the laws pertaining to false witnessing. I shall, my God, but strict adherence of the law of Moses, Jesus had placed the responsibility squarely on the accusers to put forward their witnesses. Come on, bring out who said it. My brother-in-law, my, my, my play brother from church, uh, Wilford Williams, Deacon Williams, he always said, who is that? Hey, uh, who is they? Who, who said I said that? Who, who said I did that? Who, bring the days forward. Bring the dims forward. Bring them right before the righteous judge. Uh, stand them right here and let them get that false testimony in front of my father. I saw, stand them right here and let them testify in front of the face of God. I, I know we may not see them, but he's everywhere. He's omnipresent. He, God is everywhere. At the same time, uh, go ahead and bring your witnesses. I want you to tell a false tale on me. Mama used to say, don't fib, don't you tell that untruth, don't you tell that lie. You got to watch your mouth in this season right now. God is not playing with us. Oh my God, hallelujah, Jesus. And so by strict adherence, uh, they were supposed to bring the witnesses, but they had none. And there's no witnesses to come forward. Why? Because they know now they're subject to the same penalty and punishment. Ah, my God, look at, look at how merciful God is. He loves us enough to say, all right, you may be guilty. You may have messed up. I don't see nobody here. And they're not following it book by book. And they done made up some stuff and brought you in here. And they left the man at home. They, so they didn't even do this right. They didn't even bring the meeting right. I saw, they didn't even come to you in the right way. I, they got the law, but they got it halfway. I, don't do you know that you're not supposed to leave out anything of the word of God? Don't let nothing I saw, let you leave out his word. I, you can't add to it and you can't take from it. And that's what they were doing. They were taking from it. They wanted to pull back the part that said the man I want you, and when you read in the scriptures if you read in the scriptures it deals with the man's first 
It said if a man is caught, ah, yeah, yeah, if a man is caught sleeping with another man's wife, ah, so it's, it's a man, it said man a couple of times, if the man is caught sleeping with another man's wife, then that man should die and that woman. Ah, so, see, it is not funny when it comes to how you want to really read the text. Uh, my pastor been telling us, read and make sure you stop at the commas, put a period and stop right there. Go ahead and use the exclamation point and preach the hell out of people. But let me tell you something. You can't leave nothing out. Uh, you got to add everything in it. And the Bible says in Deuteronomy 22 and 22, if the man is caught uh, in the act of adultery, sleeping with another man's wife, then the man should be put to death and the woman. Come on now. Don't play. Don't play. He, they didn't have the right. To, they had half the law there. They was trying to trip up our Jesus. Amen. Woo, thank you, God. And so there's no witnesses. Now the tables have turned. Can, can y'all see the shift? Now the tables have turned. The focus is no longer on Jesus. Uh, the focus is no longer on the woman. Uh, the focus is no longer on adultery. Uh, now the focus is on the witness. Uh, you know, uh, so now the focus is on the witness. Uh, so that, uh, you see how shift happens? Uh, shift will happen in your life. Uh, it don't matter who comes up against you. If God be for you, uh, no man can stand against you. He's our way maker. He's our defender. He's our Lord. He's our Savior. He's our King. He's our glory. Hallelujah. So you don't have to worry about it. God will shift that thing in your favor. What Satan meant for evil, God will turn it unto good. Amen. And so the tables have now turned and, and the focus has now shifted. And as for the witnesses themselves, uh, they know that if they come and, and go before Jesus, the, the righteous judge with a false uh, cross-examination, that they will be found guilty themselves and, and they would find themselves suffering death by stoning. So when he continued asking, Jesus lifted himself up and he said to them, okay, let's go ahead and settle this, y'all. Well, I, so I tell you what, I hear the Go ahead, stoner. My shoulder, go ahead, stoner. But uh, hold up, hold, hold your rock in your hand. I ain't done. I, I need the one. The one that can throw the first stone. The one that ain't got no sin. I, I need you to throw your rock first. Uh, uh, come on, step out. I, I need the one that, that's so perfect and, and living so holy and, and living so right and, and ain't made, made no mistakes. I, I need you to bring your rock forward first. I, I, I need the one uh, that ain't never had to repent, uh, never had to apologize, uh, never felt bad about nothing, uh, never had to turn your life around. Uh, I need you, uh, Mr. Perfect. Uh, I need you, uh, Miss Perfect. So come on, grab your rock. Grab the biggest rock you can find. And I need you to go ahead, well it, well it at her head. Go ahead and stone her. I need the first one to be from the one that ain't got no issues. I, I need the first one to be the one that ain't got no issues. I, I need the first one to be the one that knows that they have the right, the audacity, the legalistic, everything to throw that first stone. I need you to go ahead. He said, let he who be without sin cast the first stone cast it. My God, my God. So when he said that, mm, woo, they never, they didn't speak up anymore. They began, they said, to drop their rocks. Rocks dropping all over the place. Rocks, rocks dropping. Uh, people turning away. The Bible says that from the oldest, I saw them. you mean to tell me you, you've been in church 50, 60, 70, 80 years and, and you had to drop your stone? I'm not sure. It said from the oldest to the youngest. So you mean to tell me your, your little baby that you done brought to church had to drop his little bitty stone? You mean to tell me what nobody among from the oldest to the youngest, the tallest to the shortest, the widest to the leanest, the greatest to the smallest uh, couldn't throw a stone at this adulterous woman uh, who was caught in the very act. Uh, you mean to tell me uh, your grandmama couldn't throw a stone? Uh, your granddaddy that 
accusations against people. Uh, quit running people into the courts of heaven uh, for God to try their case because uh, he is presenting them uh, and not, not guilty. Uh, he's saying to them, uh, case number uh, J-O-H-N uh, 8-1-1 uh, is dismissed in my presence. Uh, he said, let me see. Uh, where are thou accusers, woman? Uh, she said, no, I don't see any. Uh, he said, did anybody throw a stone at you? Uh, she said, no, Lord, not one. Uh, he said, well, neither do I. Uh, and I'm the rock uh, that can pick up the stone uh, and throw it at you. Uh, I am Jesus, uh, but I didn't come to condemn the world. Uh, I came uh, to set the captives free. Uh, I came to set liberty those that are bruised. Uh, I came uh, for salvation. Uh, I came uh, with love. I came so that you may have life and have it abundantly. So I dismissed the death penalty against you. I set you free today. But hold on, little girl. Don't go nowhere. I got one more thing to tell you. Jesus says, go ahead, but don't let me catch you slipping again. Go ahead, but don't sin no more. Go ahead. Whatever you was doing before, the trial started, you got to put it down. Don't do it no more. Go ahead and go. Your accusers are gone. The liars are gone. The false witnesses are gone. The scribes are gone. The Pharisees are gone. Everybody's gone. This between me and you. So you know the things that you may be doing that God is telling you today. Go and sin no more. This is the God of a second chance. This is the God of another chance. He keeps giving us chances after chances to get this life right. But you only got one life. Don't gamble with that life. You only got one life. Don't play how much. Don't play with your life. Don't play with your life. With a real God who ain't playing with his kids. My God, hallelujah. He said, go. Mm. And sin no more. Woo. Jesus says in Matthew 5 and 17, he says, think not that I am come to destroy the law. See, I didn't come to change what was written. Ah, yeah. I, saw, I came to change those who it was written for. I, I didn't come to change what Moses said. I, I came to fulfill what he said. He said, case dismissed. And, and some of you might be still, my God. He said, or the prophets. I didn't even come to change or to destroy or abolish the words of the prophet. I am come not to destroy, but to fulfill. And so we have to understand, huh, my God, that we serve a merciful God. We serve a loving God. We serve a faithful God. There is no like them in all the world. I've searched high and low, and I have not found anyone more righteous, more fair, more loving, more patient, more forgiving. Oh, I have not found anyone like Jesus. When you find him, oh, shoot them yes, you begin to see love in action. You begin to see his mercy endures forever. So I just beseech you therefore my brethren that you walk worthy of the call that God has put on your life I beseech you my brothers and my sisters that you will be oh my God mindful of the accusations and the repeated offenses that may come out of your mouth I beseech you therefore my brethren hallelujah that you continue on this road towards righteousness oh my God for man is born but for a little while, it's trouble here. It's trouble there. It's trouble everywhere. But God is keeping us. God is carrying us. God is covering us. We serve a faithful God. We serve an amazing God. We serve a mighty God. And if it had not been for the Lord, who was on our side, oh my God, the rock could have stumbled all of us. But he didn't. He kept us for such a time as this. And I just want to say thank you. Hallelujah. Every Friday. Every Friday. Every, every Sunday. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm caught up. Every Sunday at 5. At 5 p.m. 
on Sunday night at 5 p.m. Join me for Fire in the Hole, Sunday night preaching with Reverend Kathy LaFleur. And on Sunday us that we are commissioned to go ye therefore, to preach and teach upon all nations, baptizing them, teaching them to observe all things, right? The Great Commission in Matthew. And so I just want you to know that if there's anyone watching that has not accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that this is a perfect opportunity for you to pray the prayer, the salvation prayer. And the Bible says if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ died and that God raised him from the dead, hallelujah, then you will be saved. If you are outside of the Ark of the Covenant and you have backslid and turned and went your own direction and you want to come back to Christ, not to just a building, but to him himself, to God. You want to come back to God. This is a perfect opportunity for you to do so. If you need prayer, if you need someone to talk to, if you need someone to just to just uh, listen to you, you can reach me. I'm Reverend Kathy LaFleur. My email is RevKathyLaFleur at Outlook.com. Hallelujah. You can reach me on Facebook. Hallelujah. You can reach me. It doesn't matter. Tag me. Inbox me. Amen. Amen. So I just want to thank you all for being with me tonight on my first night. Oh, thank you, God. On my first assignment, I thank God. I thank God for it because I don't know what's, what God is doing, but I trust him. I trust him. I don't know. It, it, it may sound weird. It may sound crazy. It may look crazy. But sometimes God will have you doing some things that don't make no sense. Uh, sometimes he'll have you doing some things that you don't even understand why and, and what, what's going on. But Obey the voice of the Lord. He will never lead us wrong. Be blessed. God bless you. I love you all. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening. God bless.